Aloha and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Brigadier General Cleet Getz, Commander of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Pacific Ocean Division, and Command Sergeant Major Jaime Lopez, welcome to today's Change of Command Ceremony. This morning, we bid farewell to Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Peavy, and we welcome Lieutenant Colonel Adrian Biggerstaff. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to acknowledge our special guests attending today's ceremony, Brigadier General Stephen Logan, Ms. Kalipi, Mr. Sanchez, Mr. Bowker, and most importantly, our POD and POH staff, along with our friends and family. From time immemorial, armies throughout the world have conducted ceremonies to commemorate victory over an enemy, to honor their heroes, to celebrate special occasions, or to pay homage to their fallen comrades. These ceremonies add color and pageantry to military life. In the United States, the foundation of our present ceremonies was laid by the Continental Army. Today's ceremony is a reflection of the procedures practiced since the operation. Today's ceremony is derived from our Army's first manual of ceremonies, the Blue Book, written by General von Steuben. The ceremony that you are about to see includes the arrival of the official party, honors to the nation, change of command, remarks, and the conclusion. We hope you enjoy this historic event. On behalf of the soldiers, civilians, and families of the Honolulu District, Ms. Sharni Gaibo will present lay to Lieutenant, Colonel's, to Lieutenant Colonel Peavy's family, Mrs. Christy Peavy, Aria, and a tradition symbolizing the appreciation of the support and contributions made by loved ones to our district's ohana. They are also being presented by Ms. Courtney Mills to Lieutenant Colonel Biggerstaff's family, Mrs. Juliana Biggerstaff, Dylan, Owen, and Everett to welcome them as the newest members of the Honolulu District Ohana. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for honors to the reviewing officer, our national anthem, and the invocation given by Mr. Gabe Elswifey. Brigadier General Getz will defer honors to Lieutenant Colonel Peavy and his family.
ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gabe El Swifey. Thanks, sir, for the opportunity, and thanks to everyone for making this possible. Uh, we appreciate all that you do behind the scenes for our district. If you so choose, uh, please bow your heads with me um, and join me in prayer. Aloha, Heavenly Father. I thank you for this beautiful day that we get to share with friends and family. In these wonderful islands we get to call home. I ask that you continually grow our capacity for gratitude and show us the big and little things, how good you are and how fortunate we are. Lord, I thank you for Lieutenant Colonel Peavy's stewardship of our district these last two years and for the wisdom, perseverance, and guidance you bestowed upon him. I bless his next assignment with the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works at the Pentagon, and I bless the PB families that transition, settle in, and make their new home in our nation's capital. I welcome and bless Lieutenant Colonel Biggerstaff and family as they embark on a new season of life here in these islands. May they experience your true and genuine aloha in the people, the land, and the culture of Hawaii. I ask for wisdom, patience, grace, and joy upon Lieutenant Colonel. Colonel Biggerstaff, as he assumes his new role as our district commander and as he leads us these next two years. God bless our great country, our Hawaii, our district, and this change of command ceremony in the name of Jesus. Mahalo ke akua. Amen. Thank you, Gabe. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The change of command is a simple, traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the ceremony is the passing of the unit's colors. These colors represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers and civilians. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing the responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. Throughout history, commanders ensured that their unit flags were carried by one of their most trusted officers. This was the practice used in the United States Army until 1813, when the regulations were changed. And the flag was entrusted to the color sergeants or sergeants major. District commanders select one of their most trusted civilian advisors to perform the honors. Today, Ms. Jennifer Moore, the District Chief for Program and Project Management and the Deputy District Engineer will have this honored role. The passing of the colors symbolizes the transfer of authority from the outgoing commander to the incoming commander. Because of the reverence the commanders feel toward the colors, it is kept over their left breast during the transfer. The passing of the colors demonstrates to the soldiers and civilians of the organization that the old commander has passed the mantle of leadership to the new commander. With this also passes the loyalty of the workforce to their new commander. Miss Jennifer Moore will pass the colors to the outgoing commander for the last time. Lieutenant Colonel Peavy will pass the colors to Brigadier General Getz, signifying a successful completion of command. Brigadier General Getz will pass the colors to Lieutenant Colonel Biggerstaff, charging him with the responsibility for the unit as its new commander. By the authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, Honolulu District, effective 10 July, 2024. Signed, Adrian O. Biggerstaff, Lieutenant Colonel, Engineer Commanding. Lieutenant Colonel Biggerstaff will pass the colors back to Ms. Jennifer Moore, thus completing the change of command. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the Pacific Ocean Division, Brigadier General Cleet Getz. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, aloha, ne komo mai, uh, and welcome to what is a great day for, for the PB family, the bigger staff family, the entire Honolulu District of Hana. Um, welcome. If you took the time today to join us here or join us online, thanks for being here. Gabe, that was a fantastic invocation. Thanks for that. And for all of you that work behind the scenes to put this together, thanks for doing it right. You've done a great job. You know, the Honolulu District's been around since 1905, beginning with John Rudolph Slattery, you know, when there were tall ships out in the harbor. And for 119 years since, the Honolulu District has been here serving the nation and the people of Hawaii. Now, we're no longer concerned about solely the state of the lighthouses in Honolulu Harbor. The, the area of responsibility has grown to 12 million square miles, five time zones, 10 languages here, Kwajalein Atoll, other, other places. But the thing that has been constant has always been the people. And so if I can take a moment, I'd just like to recognize and thank the workforce in the Honolulu District, past and present who might be here, for everything you do for the nation and for the island. And just get a round of applause for the district. You, you are a great team, and, and we, are, we are proud of you. Ryan, you've done a tremendous job. Now look, in a crowd full of engineers, I know someone's doing some math, right? They're dividing two by 119. So you can put away your calculators, it rounds up to like 1.7%. So that's the amount of time that Ryan's been in command. It, it, is, uh, it is a blink of an eye in the life of an organization. But Ryan, I wanna tell you, in that blink of an eye, what you and this organization have accomplished is really some incredible things. And when failure and delay are not options, you and this team have delivered. And you've done it in a manner that's respectful of culture. And I'll just talk about a few of them. I know you'll probably discuss them too. You know, as recent as last week, you delivered Dillingham Airfield lease, 50 year lease on short notice uh, for the people of Hawaii. You know, in Maui, I think your team wrote the book on how to deliver and respond in a community's wor worst day and respect culture at the same time. You know, Typhoon Maywar, you put temp power, debris, and emergency roofing, and you projected that across 4,000 miles of ocean to be there for the people there. Hawaiian water infrastructure, you're seeing the needs of this place for the next 10 years. And then places like Kwajalein, the integrated Pro program office, I think you're setting the district up and the region up for success. You put 700 million to work in 2023, you're gonna put a billion plus to work in 2024 for the common good of the people of Hawaii in the region here. Doers do that, Ryan. People that do things do that. And it's leaders like you and Jennifer Moore, Joe Kendall, the entire Honolulu district team that make it happen. And because people like you and your team take action, in the years to come, you're gonna see the, the benefits of that that are gonna last for decades. And so you've been around for the blink of an eye in the life of an organization. How do you make the blink of an eye last for years? You, you do the things that you and your team have done and you're gonna be able to look back on that. I think you'd be really, really proud. And Christy, I hope you're proud of Ryan. Um, I wanna thank you, Aria and Amia, for lending us your dad and your husband some late nights, some long times, long time away. Um, Bill and Kitty, who I think are watching from Roanoke, Virginia. Hey, thanks for raising your son that's the way you did to turn him into a man willing to serve in the Army because without you, Ryan wouldn't have been the man the district needed to meet the moment. And because of you, he was. And so thank you very much. Ryan, I know you're going on to be the military assistant to the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works. That's a mouthful. I can say authoritatively, you'll do it better than the guy who did it in 2017. Um, but I'm excited for what comes next for you I'm eager to get you back in the core, and you've got a, a really, really bright future ahead of you. Adrian, big shoes, big shoes. But you're ready because the same team that backed Team PB is the same team that's gonna be behind you. Um, and I wanna officially welcome you, Juliana, Dylan, Owen, and Everett to the Ohana. Mom and Dad, Vicki and Alan, thanks for making the trip out here all the way from Conroe, Texas. Thanks for lending us your son. Um, to do the things that the nation needs them to do here in the next blink of an eye for the Honolulu District. I've got a lot of faith in you already. In Honolulu, you've got a great commander coming in. He's an engineer expert. He's got a couple degrees from Stanford, which I'm told is a fairly decent school. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you got that joke. Uh, 
you know, made the final 50 for a NASA astronaut class. Um, he's done all the things that you would expect an Army leader to do and, and had done well. Um, by this point in your career, the Army handpicks the leaders who will lead organizations like this, uh, and he's absolutely the right guy. So, Adrian, you've won the lottery, not because you're leading an engineer district here in Hawaii and are taking command on a battleship. Pretty cool. Um, you won the lottery because you, you inherit this team um, in what it does. In two years, you're going to look back, and I think you're going to be amazed at what the Honolulu team does. Hey, now for the Honolulu district. You know, I said that you all are doers. You know, you're people of action, and, and you are. And you do incredible things in a world where sometimes the safest thing to do is, is to do nothing. But you've got the temerity and the skill to envision the things that can be done, and you go out and do it. And sometimes that comes with criticism. People that do things will always be subject to the opinions of people who don't. Okay? But, but you do. The Army needs you. The place, this place, this island, needs you and what it is you do. And so thank you very much for what you contribute to the nation, the Army, and the people of Hawaii. You are a powerhouse in the Pacific. So don't let anything stand in your way and keep delivering like you do. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for your attendance today as we recognize these gentlemen and their families. And most importantly, this incredible Honolulu District team. SAONs, building strong, be all that you can be. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the former commander of the Honolulu District, Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Peavy. Aloha and good morning. Um, sir, thanks for the, uh, the kind words. Um, it mean a lot. Brigadier General Getz, Command Sergeant Major Lopez, Mr. Sanchez, Mr. Bauke, and distinguished guests, friends and family of the Honolulu District, my family and I are humbled by your presence today. Um, before I go in, I just want to recognize everyone that's put in uh, to make this ceremony possible, all the things that go in behind it. I've been a deputy commander before, so I know all the things that go in behind it. And so let's give them a round of applause for everyone behind the scenes. There's no greater privilege than to serve alongside the civilians and soldiers of the Honolulu District. And it's an honor to be entrusted with this critical mission of such strategic importance that helps advance national priorities, build economic growth, reduce disaster risk, provide for public safety, and enhances readiness for the warfighter. I'm grateful to have served in the capacity, more than grateful to have served in the capacity as the commander and be a part of your Ohana. And I think be a part of that Ohana is more significant to me and my family. As I reflect on the past two years, the first thing that comes to my mind is an immense amount of gratefulness to be side by side with you in these very tough mission sets. But not only just tough mission sets, the joyous moments as well. To serve in the best district, you are the best district in USACE. You are. I'd put you up against any district right now and you perform. PUH, you're a great district with limitless potential, a district with an area that is 12 million square miles, as, as the CG said, over five time zones. To put that into perspective, the continent of the United States with the lower 48 is 4 million. So an area that's, that spans more than 90% of the core districts. There isn't anything the state or can't throw at you, and it will. It will continue to throw problem sets at you. And trust me, I know you will perform and you'll do so boldly with your approach. With a continuous growing program focused on the defense of the Pacific, there's an extensive list of accomplishments, and these are your accomplishments, and I want to read them off. They'll be somewhat similar to what General Getz said. Reaching no further action on two critical Department of Hawaii homeland parcels, allowing or paving the way for beneficiaries to build homes. I'm going to put in here surviving ATLR, right, Marlena? Surviving ATLR, that's a win. Cool. Dry dock sew up permit, sir, thanks for the partnership. Um, and you actually see the construction going on, the pylons over there, the most significant or largest, we, to do the permit for the largest project in the history of Navy and NAVFAC of $5 billion is uh, pretty awesome to be part of. Dillingham lease in record time, something that's been lasting for 10 years and generally a process that lasts two to three was done in six. So sir, again, thanks you for the partnership uh, on that and to the, the real estate team that I know is here as well. Um, 
the Kwajalein IPO innovation, right? Um, tough times that turned out with a good program. And I just want to say thank you to the entirety of everyone that put into that. Um, it is going to become of strategic importance, especially when Indopaycom looks to put a billion dollars worth of a project there on top of $2 billion worth of work in the next five years. Assessing the water infrastructure within a month, which only takes two years. I know Brad's somewhere in the, uh, uh, in the audience, um, directed by a four-star, unconstrained. And now we're performing in an unconstrained environment. Typhoon Moir, as you said, it's there over 4,000 miles with the unit of action forward. Um, Maui Wildfire Response, Fire Debris Removal Temp School, and awarding a record year in acquisition at the end of the year. And also a hybrid strategy for Tristan's team that put that in place. Uh, achieve star status, uh, CSOMS. So, you know, CSOMS is a long acronym, I'm not gonna explain, but one of four of 43 districts, you're, you're number four now. That is an elite group to be in. And then one, and then number four out of 600 in the Army that could have achieved that too. So that, that, that's definitely an elite group. And lastly, a discipline partnering on projects and implementing a communication strategy that, that communicates commitment and co collaboration. I gotta look at Pat Fung and the team at ENC that put that in. Um, just the consistency, not only just all the, the things, and I know Tristan, you have a, you kept, you, you stopped recording all the things, the, the crises we, 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 we took part on, but just the discipline to do that a day in and day out. There are many significant events that I remember and moments that I will cherish, but the one that stands out to me is my wildfire, and don't worry, I won't get, I won't get emotional like I have in the past. I don't know if Jesse said or not, but uh, one of the, my admin told me not to get emotional. I do what my admin tell me to do. Um, you know, thank you for allowing me to carry the banner of culture, um, a banner that is significant and important, a banner that honored culture and cultural heritage to do the right thing despite the pressure to go fast. It was my kuleana and our kuleana to do so to approach it, to make it the number one priority that remains today, to be culturally respectful, because it is the right thing to do. And I think we've shown the nation and the world the beauty and the significance of the culture and the history of Lahaina and Hawaii. And before I close, I want to say a couple of thank yous. General Spellman and General Getz, thank you for the privilege to command this organization and be a part of this fantastic team. General Gibbs, for your leadership and mentorship um, as we tackle some tough problems. To PODSES's and Colonel Curry for your guidance, understanding, and also being a sounding board. I know I called a lot, so I do appreciate it. To the executive team that takes care of me, to Colonel Kendall Baez and Jen Moore, dynamic deputies and a dynamic DPM and a battle buddy to, to tackle this program. To the corporate board, past and present, I see some past board members here too. Um, thank you for your leadership, as you said, on a single vision, mission focused with intent. To the Garrison Commander team and your partnership, thanks for treating me like an 06. I know it's tough, right? I'm a Lieutenant Colonel, but the Chief tells us we're regional commanders and I try to act like that. So, sir, thanks for, uh, thanks for the patience uh, on that every now and then. To Colonel Swinson and Curry and the RFO that tackled, and to the EM team. I know General Logan's not here as he's acting as dual status commander, but th thanks for the opportunity to help be a part of that mission as well. Um, oh, sir, you are here. I see you. To the Quaj IPO, sir, I, I tell you there is no better team in the Army than the Quaj IPO and that team on the ground in Quaj. If you don't believe me, visit Quaj, do some snorkeling and find out. They are a fantastic team, and so you'll find out when you get to go to Quaj Lane. I know Sonny, Sarah, and Preston couldn't be here today, um, but thanks you for your friendship. It means everything to us. To mom and dad, thank you uh, for being there for me. <laughs> I promised. Um, I wouldn't be... <laughs> I wouldn't be here today without you. Um, at a POH, for all the memories, I, I don't think I can say enough thank yous to this district and the people of this organization. So thank you for everything, the memories, the special moments, and allowing us to be Ohana. And lastly, and most importantly, to Christy, Aria, and Amia. Thank you for your love and support and allowing me to go on so many long, long TDYs um, over the 12 million square mile AO. I couldn't have done this without you. Colonel the district next, you're getting a great commander and amazing family. I was lieutenants and young captains with them here in Hawaii. He is exactly, the, they are the exact right choice for this district. There's no other person I would want to take this mantle 
uh, and most of all, his heart's pono. Um, again, thank you for everything. Mahalo we know, and thank you again. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honolulu District Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Adrian Biggerstaff. Aloha. Wow. Wow. Mahalo for being here. I I've been in command for about 16 minutes, and I have a lot of thank yous to give, so please bear with me. For Mahalo for those who are here in person and those who are streaming online, those who can be here, you're missing an amazing day. And part of the reason this is an amazing day is because this set it. And there's a lot of backup crew that made this happen, so please bear with me as I go through this list. Joe, you're in the hot seat over there. Thank you, you're doing a great job. Chris. About to get on the plane to Las Vegas with her son right now, but she had been pushing through the past two weeks to make this happen. Phenomenal team. Tina, Eddie, Mark, Cortland, Sharni, Dewey, Courtney, Chief Simon, Andre, thank you for all the support. Also want to shout out to Brian and Corey with TV2. Made a special exception for this and we really appreciate it, as well as MC1 Williams Church uh, with DMA. Thank you all for making this happen. Brigadier General Getz, thank you for presiding over today's ceremony. And thank you for trusting me to command the Honolulu District. I truly look forward to your mentorship and leadership over the next two years. Command Sergeant Major Lopez, thanks for squaring us away and making this ceremony respect the tradition. Mom and Dad, they traveled here from Texas, Alan and Vicki Biggerstaff, leaving their house in the wake of Hurricane Barrel, barreling up the Pacific, or the, sorry, the, the Gulf to be here to support me. One of the thousands of things they've done in my life to support me. So thank you for being here, and I love you very much. Trigger the tears now. All right. I also need to recognize my wife and my boys. Juliana, she has made countless sacrifices, personally and professionally, to support me in serving. And my boys, Dylan, Owen, and Everett, they have replanted themselves across the United States over and over again to be where the Army needs us to be. So thank you for being here today and supporting me, and I love you all more than you all know. So if you haven't been here before, just moving to the bow, going up one level to the quarter deck, that is where the United States closed the chapter on World War II. And if you look out over Pearl Harbor, you see where we started that chapter. And this is a very special place. And we think about those 2,400 lives lost in that attack, and there were 1,100 injuries, we can take away at least three, three conclusions. One, that service comes with great sacrifice. Two, the freedoms that we have today, they weren't free. And three, our nation has to remain vigilant and defended to deter those who may want to attack us on our homeland. And it's that last point that makes me passionate about serving in the Army and passionate about serving the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, particularly the Honolulu District. Because this, this district is a vital player in defending our nation and safeguarding the people of the Pacific. And all the accomplishments they have made over the past two years has been under the leadership of this man in front of me, Brian Peavy. I had a lot of jokes lined up today, a lot, <laughs> to highlight the size difference between me and Ryan. Brigadier General Getz touched on one of the big shoes to fill. I was going to use the, uh, it's be so hard to get the district to look up to me like they look up to Ryan. Uh, the only time I can be at his levels when he's sitting down. Uh, it, it's just going to keep going. They're going to be perfect. They're going to be delivered perfectly, and they're going to be hilarious. But I didn't want the message to get lost in the humor. Ryan is a phenomenal leader. He's an authentic person, and he's a genuine friend. He has invested so much into this district. And while investing in that district, he grabbed me seven months ago, and he started teaching me about the USACE enterprise, about the district itself. And just by virtue of being around him, I got a refresher course on what world-class leadership looks like. So Ryan, I have want to give you my most heartfelt thank you for being a great leader for Honolulu District for this amazing transition. 
truly the best I've had and for being a good friend. Now I need to shift to the ladies to your right. Christy, Ari, and Amia, you all have been, this is cliche, the wind beneath his wings. But we have a lot of engineers out here today, so I'm gonna use a different term. They have been the lift force to his airfoils. And if you're an engineer, you appreciate that, especially, in the, oh, I got Mr. Sanchez over there cracking up, so I got one, one person that got it. But you all have been the passion. He's been away doing great things, but it's been at your sacrifice. You've had so many nights, so many nights away from him so he could go and do the work he's done. So between now and before he reports to Mr. Connor, get those hugs, steal those hugs from him while you can, and, and thank him for what he's done, but also spend that quality time with him in this transition. Okay, so in closing, I wanna thank the people of the Honolulu District, past and present. You have so warmly welcomed me and my family into your Ohana. And you've also demonstrated the professionalism and the commitment that you have to deliver our program. And I am extremely excited to serve with you over the next two years. I want you to know that I am committed to each one of you, to our partners, and to the communities, the communities in which we serve. And again, I am so honored to serve next to you. So for all of you here today, and those of you online, mahalo for being here and supporting the ceremony. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise and join in the singing of the engineer and army songs. The words are located in your programs. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of the Commander of the Pacific Ocean Division, we wish to thank you for your attendance at today's Change of Command ceremony. Lieutenant Colonel and Mrs. Peavy and family will receive friends and well wishes at the front in front of the colors. Lieutenant Colonel and Mrs. Biggerstaff will be returning shortly to the district for a receiving line and reception in the Honolulu District Headquarters located in Fort, on Fort Shafter. You are invited to join the reception hosted by the commander in the conference room of building 230. Mahalo and thank you again for attending today's ceremony. <laughs>